farmers are a very sanguine, accepting lot. And people say they get desperately depressed during the drought and everything, but they don't. They know it'll rain one day and they accept what comes with the seasons, but they cannot accept the thought of the loss of their water. They're very, very seriously determined to not let this go ahead. I don't know if the government realise just how determined they are. When you have no faith in government and no faith in the integrity of a company you're dealing with, people power is the only thing that helps. We're all going to have to become environmental vigilantes to protect our environment and the resources, namely the water, that agriculture so um, importantly depends on. It really is about collectively coming together as a community and as a team and as Australians to protect the lucky country. All we can do is get out there and fight for our land because we are the keepers of the land and we want it kept the way it should be. The reason why I have always encouraged landholders to, to fight for their land is because I've seen many instances of landholders uh, being trapped. So if you don't fight and you allow the miner on, then they develop their project, then you can't sell your land. Our elected representatives have completely abandoned us. The political system, I believe, when it breaks down like that, then the people have to start speaking up. That's what the gas fill free is all about. Everyone that we could possibly survey in the district was done and they just said, look, actually, we don't want this. I'm one of these typical farmers that wake up at four o'clock in the morning. That's when the brain works. And the bins, I thought, well, you know, I'm living on a very active road where a lot of grey nomads come past. They use the artesian water system right through the winter, especially at Pilliga and Burren Junction. And I thought it was a great way of advertising the fact that this water could be destroyed. I started letter writing and then I started attending protests and I will continue to protest. I would like to be a suffragette of the 21st century. I've never protested against anything like this before. I've never stood up for anything that, that didn't involve my family. This it just means so much to so many people for this not to happen. And uh, they are not going to win. No way. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. That's Ted Borowski from the Pilliga Road, Canamble. Living legend. Living legend. And when Mum said, Dad's going to lock on, at first I thought, no way. That's just not possible. Like Dad, lock on. You know, like he's just, no way. You know, that's what the hippies do. That's what the Greens do. But not what, you know, Dad does. And he did it, and he loved it. It was incredible. It was, it was inspiring in a way. He led us into thinking that this is actually a way that we might have a say. Ted dived under and bolted himself on under a truck, and he was there for, I think, nearly seven hours. The courage for someone to do that, and the fact that he felt it necessary to do that to be heard, I find very, very moving. I felt that we needed to bring attention to the farming community. It was right out of my character. It took a lot for me to do that, but I felt strongly about something that needed to get out there. So with the ongoing protests in this region, we managed to have David Paul. He's a local ecologist, very well respected in his field. He managed to lock himself to the Osmoflow truck. I'm concerned about our future. I'm concerned about bush, I'm concerned about our farming, I'm concerned about all those things. Seems to be only ordinary people concerned. Doesn't seem to be anyone in the government's particularly concerned about it. Sometimes ordinary people have to put their bodies on the line and say, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Another day trying to save the planet. People power. That's what we need, people power to get out there and to stop it. We're here to show the government and show the people and show Santos and show all the coal seam gas mining people that we're fair dinkum and we're going to do whatever we can to succeed in stopping coal seam gas mining. Yeah.
much. You can put down your cameras and leave. Thank you. There's Please. some wonderful, deeply concerned conservative farmers around like Mark and Cherie Robinson who protested and Ted Borowski. They're just lovely, genuine, hard-working farmers and I am desperately upset that they have been put in the position where they feel that they've been abandoned. Water is life, no CSG. There's no handbook for how do you fight you know, your own state government and the largest companies in the world who want to come and invade your farm. I was fined, uh, one of the heaviest fines that was at that time, I think it was um, in excess of about three and a half thousand dollars. It was an example, I think, that the government wanted to be made of me. The judge um, threw basically the case out of the window. To me, it was so important. I've had elderly war veterans saying to me, we fought for our country, we were prepared to die for our country, we never thought we'd be fighting our own government one day to defend our country. And they are as determined as they were when they went to war. Dad and I do have a very, very good bond, very strong bond. We've been arrested six times together. We've more or less walked out of court each time. The, the magistrates seem to understand what, what's going on in the world and have seen fit to <laughs> to let us go. I've only finished up with like a $650 fines all up, but Dad's, he's special. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he's walked out no, no, no cost at all. I think it was about the fourth arrest before we started to <laughs> feel a bit, a bit relaxed about it. It's not, it's not easy. Um, uh, but you just realise you've just got to get out there and do it. We've been through years of just signing petitions and ringing politicians and attending protests, which the media never turned up to, and you just do too much, and then you think, no, you've got to, you've got to take that little extra step and say this is important. I got it into my head that we should do a mass lock-on. I managed to convince uh, five other farmers and a fella from town that we should go and lock on to these rigs. Dad did it, you know, so let's just get in there and do it. So we turned up at around about 2.30 in the morning, so no pulling out now, we're, we're, we're gonna lock on and, and that's all there is to it. We had no idea what we were in for. We're law-abiding citizens and never been charged or anything like that. So you sort of gotta understand that it takes a lot to, to, to do that. So we all, all, all jumped in the car and drove to the scrub marched right through the gates and just walked on, found a spot and locked on tight for about seven hours. The amount of gas they're going to get out of here is will only feed China for a couple of days. We're trying to save, save this country for our kids for the next two generations. This is the lengths that uh, we as farmers are having to resort to. Coal seam gas mining is bringing to the surface millions of tonnes of contaminated salt. Without the artesian basin, mate, we've got nothing. What we really need to be protecting is, our, is our, our land and our water and our rights. If there's a threat, then we have to get on it like a beehive. We were packed up in the back of the cop cars and taken out of there. It's an amazing thing what it can do to you is it can sort of throws you into this headspace that, that, that all of a sudden you're actually doing something. You're seeing that rig stop. It is effective, but now with the trespass laws that have been ramped up in order to stop uh, that sort of protesting. It's just incredible that they all got together and they managed to pass that one. In my view, it would be a ridiculous situation uh, if a judge penalised a, a blockader in the same way that they penalised a rapist. Seven years prison, I mean, that, that is ludicrous. If there is a threat of being locked up for seven years, you're still do this. What a lovely rest for a farmer's wife, being locked up <laughs> for seven years. <laughs> You'd have to question our government doing that, wouldn't you? <laughs> what is democracy doing? What is democracy in this country? Is there a democracy in this country? Does it exist anymore? Like, I mean, it doesn't seem to be what, what we say, nobody listens. So, yeah, we've got to be louder, I suppose. We all do different things. There's lots of people that probably haven't got the time to go out there, but they certainly can do a little bit of research these days and find out what's going on. In the city, 
They don't really see it as something which is going to radically alter this country. It's going to radically alter our ability to feed ourselves. It's going to radically alter our um, ability to meet climate change uh, agreements. My biggest concern ultimately is carbon emissions. Yeah, we're just in denial. Uh, and as a farmer, I'm, I'm going to be at the forefront of the impacts. And we're at 400 ppm at the moment. And we're just going to progress into the future in 400, 420, 450. And at, at that point, God knows what's going to happen. We are mortgaging our children's future. One of the two greatest commandments in the Bible is, is to love your neighbour. And I take a broad definition of neighbour, which includes uh, not just the people who are farming this area and living in this area at the moment, but the generations that will come after us. It includes our, our neighbours in uh, Pacific islands who face uh, rising sea levels. Uh, it includes the flora and fauna in the forests. If we get to the end of this, and God forbid we get a bad result, then I know that I've done everything I possibly can to help. I moved to the Pilliga four years ago. I came out here to help the community form a bond and drive out Santos. There's 1,300 men coming to rural outback New South Wales. I'd like to see people take direct action straight to Parliament House and straight to the cities. You just need to kick up a stink where you live, everywhere you live. If you care about New South Wales as a gas play, then time's now. There are many, many wonderful people out there that are actually moved by the injustice to get involved. And that's what's going to win. That's what the government can't cope with. I feel the fight against coal seam gas can be won. As people become aware of the facts about this industry, the chances of it getting a foothold are diminishing greatly. Gandhi won Indian independence. Apartheid fell. Uh, things that were seemingly impossible just happened. Uh, and it happened because people dug their heels in. You can look at some of the Queensland landowners who have said no. They haven't gone to court. You know, we didn't go to court. Joe Hill didn't go to court. Brian Monk didn't go to court. So there's a number of landowners that have all said no and have just said go away and nothing has happened to them. The Joe Hill technique is to not let them in the gate. Until I've been proved wrong, I'll stick to it. <laughs> the view of our Senior Council is that there are still very good arguments for protection of improvements on landholders' lands under both the Petroleum Onshore Act and the Mining Act. There are a very significant number of landholders who are within the project zone in the Narrabri gas project. Those landholders can use the provisions of the Petroleum Onshore Act to protect their improvements. The, the changes to the law now provide that those costs will be payable by the miner. I would encourage people by just saying we've had wins. It can be done and we're doing it. In many ways the most impressive campaign was actually Gloucester. A small community already had mining uh, in there. They won. They pulled together, they had some terrific leadership. They managed to win against all the odds. The networking is massive. I think that, um, that people need to stand up and be counted at the right time. I wished I didn't have to do it, but I'm glad that I did what I had to do. What are you going to do with your spare time when we win this? <laughs> <laughs> In St Peter's, we won. And we did that by using everybody's skills. The project really has to become unbankable and it will be time that helps us there. It will be fighting and time which results in the banks, the institutions, not pre being prepared to fund this project. And that's already happening. I have a responsibility to see this out to the end. And I'm going to see this out to the end. Win, lose or draw. We're definitely going to be here in 10 years if they mothball it. Um, <laughs> we, we're not going to just stop doing what we're doing. We will continue to be a presence. So many good people, stewards of the land, are coming together saying no, they will win. It's just a matter of time. We'll keep focused and we'll drive the buggers out. I believe this is our asbestos and tobacco industry all over again. And I think we have a moral responsibility to future generations to stop it. We will do whatever it takes to protect our land and our water. 
It is that important. This is a battle that we cannot afford to lose.